Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic. Now, as most of you know, we've been working on Roots Magic 8 for a while, and we've been getting a lot of requests. You know, what does Roots Magic 8 look like? What's it going to be able to do? How much different is it? When's it going to be released? All of those types of questions. And so a while back, we started doing some blog articles to show you what was going to be coming in version 8. But what we realized is that the more we worked on these, the more time it was taking for us to take away from our programming and sit down and do screenshots and, and decide what we wanted to write about and then get it posted and everything. And so uh, we realized that a lot of our users were feeling less than satisfied by this because it would be a while between these blog articles and they would feel like we didn't get to show them enough, they didn't get to see enough. And so what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm doing a video here and we're going to show you Roots Magic 8. We're going to go through all the different screens, uh, well most of the different screens, we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, this is going to be a brief overview in that I'm not going to cover every single thing that's in version 8 because I can't possibly do that in any decent amount of time. It would take weeks to cover everything that's that's going to be in here. Um, so I, let's just go ahead and I'm just going to jump right into this. Now one thing I want to make clear is what I'm demoing here is the Windows version. Now Mac, version, Mac users don't worry, we have a Mac version as well. It looks exactly like this. It's just I had to pick one or the other to do it so I'm doing it from Windows because that's what I'm actually more comfortable with. Okay, so when you first start Roots Magic 8, it's going to come up to a screen and this is going to be your home screen. Now there's a little side menu over here and it fills out more as you open a database, but for right now you have a home screen and you have a file, a little file uh, view. So I'm going to start with this home view because this is the one that starts up with the program. And what this gives you is a number of pieces of information. It'll let you know if there's an update available, and if there is, you can just click and download it, or you can see what information there is. The news is here as well. So that news screen that normally pops up separately inside of Roots Magic, it's right here. Uh, and as you read uh, articles, it will remove the little star. So the little star means you haven't read that article yet. Once you've read it, then that little star goes away and you can tell which ones you have or have not read. We also have a section here for help and support, which makes it easily to, easy to quickly get to our webinars, to our YouTube channel, to our magic guides, and also directly to our tech support. Finally, we have this section here, Roots Magic Files, and this is where you can create a new Roots Magic file, you can open an existing Roots Magic file, or you can select a file that you've already used, that, that you've recently used. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up this Leroy Harris file. I just click on that and Roots Magic opens up that file. So once you've opened up a database, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this little side menu over here. And as you switch between the side menu, you're going to see the various views of data. And we're going to come back to all of these. But let's go hop right here to the to the pedigree to this pedigree view or the people view first. Now this people view is what you're normally used to seeing in Roots Magic. Okay, this is where you're going to have your pedigree view, family view, descendant view, people view, couple view. Uh, those th these are the views that you normally have been used to be switching tabs to see in Roots Magic. Now our main goal in Roots Magic 8 was to reduce the amount of pop-up screens that kept coming up. Okay, and so by doing that we pulled out the main types of data that you would look at and we put those here on the side. So when you select the people view, you're working with people, various views of people. When you click on places, you're working with places. And there's a couple of different views of places, the place list and then a map view. Okay, when you're working with sources, you're going to you just click on sources and here you're now working with sources. Okay, media. When I click on media, it's going to display my media and I can now work with my media directly from here. Tasks. Okay, this is going to be my tasks. This is going to be uh, somewhat similar to uh, to-do list, research logs, 
correspondence logs, kind of th those items that you had in, in the c current and older versions of Roots Magic. And like I say, we'll come back to these. Addresses, this is where you can work with addresses and repositories. Search, this is where we brought all of the search features kind of into one place. In Roots Magic 7, search, the various search screens are scattered all over the place. Here, you, if you want to search for something, you come to the search tab and you go right to that to do whatever search you want. Okay, you've got the publishing. Publishing is where you're going to be able to publish, print, or share your data. So this is where you're going to get to your reports and charts. Um, we're going to show you the, the ones you've used most recently, but then you can hop to the full list of reports and charts. Books, this is what we call the publisher in Roots Magic 7. This is where you can create books created with combinations of the various reports and charts. And if you've created some already, you'll see them so you can just directly go to them or you can go in and view and manage them. This is where you'll also be able to access your online uh, sharing. So, for example, this is where you can create your Roots Magic, your My Roots Magic tree or where you can get to your working with Ancestry or Family Search. And then finally, the sharing with uh, what, what had, was a shareable CD. We're extending that to be more than just sharing a shareable CD, being able to create a shareable flash drive, that type of thing. So those are in there as well. So that's, this is all the published printing and sharing that you have available goes on in here. And then finally, your settings page. And this is where you're going to adjust all your various settings. And you'll be able to switch between the different categories. And the, 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 you just basically edit, make your changes right here. So if you want to know uh, who should be your start person, you can click and choose the root person or the last person. So you can see you can actually edit right from here. If it's, if it's text, you can, it'll be a text field. If it's a checkbox, it'll be a checkbox field. If it's a list, it'll be a list field. Uh, this is a kind of a unique new way of uh, of letting you letting you edit your data uh, that we're using here in Roots Magic 8. So let me go back up here to file. We're going to start with the very. We're going to go start and just go through and spend a little bit more time on each one of these tabs. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the file. The, well, let's go to the home tab first. You'll notice that when you have a database open, that this section right here will change to be your properties for that file. Okay, other, other than that, everything else on the home page is the same. Your file page will let you do things like create a new file, open a Roots Magic file, import, export. You've got your various tools uh, for doing things with a file. You can close your file right from here if you want. What I want to do is I want to open a, open a file right here. So I'm going to click on Open. It's going to give me a list of, of recent files. And you'll notice right down here, it's searching. Okay, it's actually looking for additional files with it before I even ask for it. So it's doing that in the background. So it's going to show me here's recent files. We're looking for more files, you know, without you even bothering to ask. Or you can all browse for a file or restore from a backup. But I'm going to go ahead and just select this, this file right here that we have. And it opens up it opens up another another database. And so now I have two databases open. Now there's just a couple of things I want to point out. One, you'll notice that each of these Roots Magic databases is its own window. Okay, this is not like Roots Magic in the past where you had one main Roots Magic window and all your databases were confined within that one window. By making them separate like this, it makes it easy that if I have more than one monitor, I can just click and drag this other database over to the other monitor. So I can have databases on both monitors if I want to do that. The other thing I want you to kind of notice is this little section, this little colored, this little colored area right here that has the, has the database name. You notice that on these two databases are different colors. Now by default they're always going to be this color, but the program is going to let you switch that color so that if you have more than one database open, it's easier, it's easy to spot which file is which without having to necessarily look at the look at the file name. It just makes it stand out more. When you're done with the database, you just click, do a backup if you want, close it up. 
Okay, so that's your that's your uh, that's kind of an overview of the file menu. There, like I can say there's a lot more in there. Let's go ahead and move to the people view right now. The people view. This is where you're going to be able to uh, see the pedigree view. You'll be able to see a family view. Now the family view looks a little bit different in that the children uh, in version seven were a list. They are now basically a uh, a scrollable. They look just like the, the the parents and the grandparents. The advantage of this is that you can see all the same information that you could for the parents. Plus you can see the spouses, which you couldn't in seven. You can add spouses right from here as well. Okay, you also have your descendant view. Your descendant view is collapsible. You can collapse various generations or, or, gen, or various families. You also have your people list. Okay, this is basically the same as the people, the person list in, in version seven, where you can select between your groups, you can customize the columns, add columns, you can do all of those same types of things. Um, we've, we've made some things easier to get to. If you need to jump to your, back to your home person, right there, you can do back or forward to go through the history list. Okay, you also, if you want to add a person, you come up here and you can click on add and add person just like you could before. Uh, you also have the same ability to add father or mother, add people the same way you did in version 7. So we're, we try to not make the program too different. We don't want people to... We don't want users to get into version 8 and say, this is so different, I just can't even figure anything out. It, we, what, what you'll find is that within a week, you'll be up and running, and you'll realize how much harder everything was to do and to find in version 7. You'll also have options on the, on the various pages. So like on the pedigree view, you can click, and you'll see options for the pedigree view and the various, the various person options. Now, in version 8, We've moved the information for the highlighted person over here on the right. And by doing that, uh, we free up the ability to show more information. So we can actually show you the person's picture, uh, their, their birth and death, their, their spouses and children, all the various family. We, you can see all of those people right from there. And you can click on any of these family members to jump to that person on the main view. Okay, you also have the ability from right here to add a child to the, a family, to rearrange the children in the family, to add spouses. Same thing with siblings and children and parents as well here. Okay, over here on the side, you also have your name list. Okay, this is similar to the list in Roots Magic 7 that we had on the left. A couple of differences. If I were to come over here and type in Harris, you'll notice that it, what it does is it actually filters the list now. It used to jump to the first person that matched what you typed and then you had to do next, next, next to see all of them. Now the search the search actually does a filter. So if I do Harris comma R-E-N, okay, it's going to bring up Clarence because Clarence has R-E-N in it and Pearl Irene, it has R-E-N. So that's another thing that you'll notice. The big advantage of this over um, over what we used to call incremental search is that it doesn't have to match the beginning and it doesn't have to match exactly. You can type in text that's within the person's name rather than having to start with it. If it starts with it, it'll catch that as well too, obviously. But okay, We also have your history list, which is the people you've moved through. We have your bookmarks that you can select a person, click add, it bookmarks them. We also have your groups. So as you move around, you'll see which groups a person was in. All the groups that you add to your database will be right here, but whichever groups a person's in will be checked. So if I move to another person, you know, as I move from person to person, you'll see it will show you that. And this is fully editable, so if I want to add a person to a group, I just check the check the box that they're for the group they're in and it's going to add them to that group and I can come up here and I can just add a new group click that and I can just add a brand new group it'll get added to everybody uh, for them to be able to select from okay now you might have noticed you might have noticed that uh, when I showed you the, these views that the timeline view is not here 
And the reason for that is because what we did is we've, in, we've implemented and added the timeline view into the edit screen. So when you open up a person's edit screen now, it has that timeline information right here. So you're going to see, in addition to the person's birth, marriage, death, and the facts that you've added for that person, you're going to see those other family members, the birth of the spouse, the birth of the child, the, the death of, the, of a parent. You're going to see all of that information, and that's all fully editable from here, just as any other piece of information is. So like if I selected the person's birth, I can edit any of the birth information right here. Okay, if I click on the birth of the spouse, I can edit that spouse's birth information right from this edit screen. Okay, now another thing on this edit that you'll notice is that it not only shows you how many sources, how much media, how many tasks, who it's shared with, but it will show you the actual sources, media tasks themselves. So if I go down here to a person, you'll see that they have one citation. They have one source for their birth. And I can click to add a new citation, or I can click on the existing citation, and that citation will slide right in, and I can edit that citation right from here. This is a fully editable. I'm, I'm actually editing the citation. Once I've done that, I return, and I'm right there. I've, I've got my edited, my edited citation. Same thing with media. If a person has media, you're going to actually see the actual media item right here on that marriage fact. So as I'm editing the marriage fact, I can see the media right there. I can click on media. The media item slides right in where I can actually edit that media item. I can change the caption, the description, the date. I can also see who else might be using that media. I can click on the media item to bring up the full size media viewer to see the, to go in and see all the details on that media. Okay, same thing, same thing with tasks, you know, the to-do list, the tasks, those work exactly the same way. Now, a few other pieces of information that are new on the edit screen are the groups. Okay, I don't have to click a separate button to, to edit groups. I can just uh, see the groups that they're in right here. I highlight that and I can edit the groups here the same way I can do from the main screen. Web tags is the same way. I can see the web tags I have here. I can click on that and I can view my web tags for this particular person right here. I can click on add to add web tags. I can go in here in, into the, the actual web tag uh, screen to be able to delete web tags or edit them or whatever. And these are, these are actual links where when I'm looking at the web tags, I can just click on it and it will open up my browser and jump right to them. Okay, now you'll notice You'll notice that, oh, and by the way, these, these most of these things are, are options. So if I want to see my edit screen the way it is in 7, I, if, in other words, if I don't want all of that timeline stuff, I can go turn off that, and I've got a, an edit screen that works just like, just like it did in, in version 7. So I can go turn those on or off. I can also do one thing that's also kind of cool here is I can choose what order to sort my, my facts by. Now by default it sorts them by date, so that's the way you're used to it in version 7. But I can also tell it to search or to sort it by the fact type or by the, uh, by the place name. And then places can also be reversed right here. If I want those places to be United States, New York, Warren, Queensbury, I can do that as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you one of my favorite features on the edit screen, and that is the uh, ability to edit somebody else from this same screen. So if I'm working on Freelon here, and I decide I want to actually, I need to make a change to Mary Elizabeth Hubble, I don't want to have to close this screen and go to her and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little, the little icon next to her name, and it's going to give me the option to switch to her or to switch to any of the kids that he has with her. You can do that. Uh, the parents, you can see the parents will work the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to Mary. Okay, and now I'm on Mary's edit screen. Okay, same edit screen, but I'm working with Mary now. And I can go in and I can make whatever changes I need to her. 
And then once I once I'm done with her, I click the back arrow, and I'm back on free lawn. And this can be nested more than one deep. So in other words, I can if I go to switch to Mary, and I'm working with her, and then I decide I need to do something with one of her parents, I can go switch to her mom. So now I'm working on her mom. Once I'm done working with her mom, I click to go back to her, and then I click again to go back to free lawn. Now you're not limited to working with these multiple people on the one screen. If I come here and I want to work with somebody else, let's say this Job, I want to work with him, I can just come over here and I can double click and I'm now working, I'm now working on his edit screen. But you'll notice I still have free lawns is still open. So I can act, have up to three edit screens open at once. So I can I can be working with multiple people. I can have them, and you know you can come over here and tile those if you wanted. But so that's a quick overview. That's a quick overview of of the edit screen. The ability to select a piece of information, to select an item in the row, and come over and directly edit citations, media, whatever right from that one screen without going five screens deep to get to that. Okay, I'm going to hop out of here and I'm going to kind of switch things back to where they were. Okay, um, let me go ahead and switch to places and I'm not going to spend as much time on these various screens as I did on the on the people screen. Um, Part, partly because much of what they what they do works exactly the same. Okay, so in, in the place view, in the place view, I can select any place, and I can see how many events are in that place, and I can also see how many place details that place has. So if I come to this barn stable, I can see there's one place detail, and the little arrow, the little arrow means I can click on this. To actually slide the place details. Once once those place details slide in, I, I'll be able to see how many events are in each of those, and I'll see that as well. So when I'm working on a place, when I'm working on Barn Stable, Massachusetts, I can come over here and I can edit this. This is fully editable. I don't have to pop up a separate edit screen to get to any of this. If there's a note, I can click on that, and it will slide the note that I have for that in, and I can do that. And I'm right back to there. I can add media just the same way I do from the person's edit screen. And I can see whatever events happened in that place. I can click and it'll slide in and show me whatever whatever events happened in that place. So if I've got a if I've got a place here, let's pick this one, it's got 10 events in it. I can slide slide that in and I can see the 10 people or the 10 facts that I have in that place. Okay. Uh, let's go to sources. Sources like I say, a lot of these are going to work very similar. I'm working, here's my sources, these are my master source, and it's going to show me how many citations I have for each one of these. So if I select this one, it's showing me I have 20 citations. Now, it, over here it's showing though that it's used 69 times. Okay, there's one change, there's really one change in sources and citations that we've made here in version 8. And that is that a citation can be reused. Okay, in Roots Magic 7, every citation was only tied to one event. So if you had the exact same citation for 10 people, you actually had that citation entered 10 times. Okay, now if I come to here, I can click on see those 20 citations, and I can see that, you know, in this case, it's just a bunch of different page numbers in this book. But I can see that page 86 has 11 different people on it. So I, won't, I don't have to have 10 separate citations for this. I can come and I can see everybody that's listed on page 86 of that, of that particular book. Okay. Again, when I'm on the source, I come here and I can edit the source. We still have the same source wizard like we had before. Um, so sources can be freeform. Sources can also have a source type that you select that works exactly the same. One thing that is different is if you have a source that's not, and I don't know if I've got any in here. If I have a source, 
if I, I, I don't have one here. So if I have a source that's not a free form, if I've actually used a template, one thing we've added, which we've had a lot of requests for, is the ability to edit the footnote, the short footnote, and the bibliography for that templated source. So the template, you will use the template, you'll fill it in, and it will write the pre-formatted source, the footnote, short footnote, and, and bibliography for you. But if you want to go in and edit that footnote or that short footnote or that bibliography for that one, for that one citation, you can go ahead and do that. You can go in and edit that. Once you do that, then the master source template, you will have an option to reset the source back to its back to its templated form. But it does give you the ability to uh, to edit those as you as you desire. Okay, hop to media. Not a lot to show on media here, um, uh, except that you can select a media item, and you can see. You can edit it right from here. You can edit the description. You can edit everything. You can see who's using that media, and you can add other people to that media. Okay, tasks. Okay, tasks are going to be kind of a combination of to-do list, research log items, and correspondence log items. Okay, and so as I select a task, as I select a task, I can come over here and I can edit the task. So I can put what the name of the task is, the start, the end date, the date I most recently worked on it, what my goals are for that task, what my results were, the status, uh, the priority, reference number, file name. And then I can also see where this task is used. Okay. Now what's nice about tasks is that it, tasks are not tied to just people anymore. Okay, you used to have to do items and you could attach to do items to a few things. Tasks, you create the task and then you can add or link to it any number of things. So task, a task can have people, families, places, sources, citations, uh, you know, pretty much anything can be tied to these tasks. So that your task not only uh, has some information that you type in, but it also ties together all those all those pieces, those places and people and sources and media and whatever uh, that are involved with that task. Now, what we also have in addition to tasks is we have what are called folders. So these are the tasks. We also have what are called folders. And so a folder, I can create a new folder and give it any name and give it a description, and then I can add tasks to that folder. So for those who, who, people who have wanted to use research logs but didn't necessarily know how a research log worked, this is basically ma makes that simple. Okay, in other words, you just create your tasks, you tie whatever you need to to your tasks, and then you add your tasks to a folder. And what's great is you, you can add a task to more than one folder. So if you have a task to find information out for a particular family, you can add that task to a folder for each individual member of that family if you wanted to have a folder for each one. If you had, if you were doing research for a place, you could add all your tasks that had to do with that particular place to that folder. Okay, so there's really not going to be uh, any limitation to the number of things that you are able to do with these tasks. Okay, addresses. Addresses, you're going to have your addresses where you can edit the information, see who uses that address, or you can see your repositories. And you, with your repository, again, just like with the addresses, you can do that, and you can see where that, what that's using that repository, whether it's a source, whether it's a, um, you know, a, 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 a location, whatever. Whatever's using that repository, you're going to see that there. Okay, search. Search, we've divided up a little bit. This search is kind of, is basically called a person search. It's a very simple search. So this basically, if I just want to search for everybody named Leroy, I just select enter Leroy, say do the search, and it gives me all the Leroy's. It doesn't matter whether it's a first name or a last name. Uh, if I want to show alternate names for people, I can do that. So this Lee Harris, you can see record number, you can see that's actually Leroy. He was known as Lee. But so you can show the alternate names in there. Now from this list, you got a couple of options. I can I can just bring up the edit screen for that person, 
or I can click go to and it will jump me to back to the people view for whatever the currently selected view was, pedigree or family or whatever, for this person. It will jump me to this person back on the people view. Okay, we also have, and like I say, this is a kind of a, a, a simple, basic person search where you can enter the given and surname, birth, death, years, record number, and their sex. Uh, and so very simple, very simple person search when you're just quickly looking for a person. We have the advanced search. This is, this is what we had in Roots Magic 7, similar to what we had in Roots Magic 7, where you can pick any piece of information. Uh, you know, so you can say, I want everybody who's... Uh, whose birth, date, place, place details, value, source, age, exists, whatever. Uh, you know, equals is before, is after. So, you know, you can get as complicated as you want with this search. It works exactly the same. Click do search and it will give you the list of results for that. We have our web search. Web search is in here as well. You fill in the information, who the provider is, and you do search and it will open it up in a browser type window right here. Uh, you can also use an external browser, same as in Roots Magic 7. So that this is very similar to that. And then we have our find everywhere. And this is where you can go in and say, uh, show me everything with New York. Do that search. It searches the whole database and comes up and gives you a list of every place that that's used you know so you've got in this case you've got people you've got families you've got sources you've got citations you've got places so and then and then these you, you, you can again you can click on these to edit edit that information as well settings settings you've got your general settings you've got your display settings uh, your folder settings these are all very close to the same settings we, that we've had in version 7. It's just a nicer way of keeping them all together. You don't have to memorize whether a setting is a, is a file setting or a, um, or, or a program setting. You don't have to rem remember that. You, just, you can go through here and you'll see all your settings uh, right here. Okay. Well, so there you have it. Um, Oh, well, let me show you one, one, other, one last thing I just thought of that I should have showed you before. Um, one of the most complicated things in Roots Magic right now is setting the primary photo for a person. And we, we know that. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't do that on purpose, although we've been accused of doing it on purpose. But in, in Roots Magic 8, when you, you open up a person's edit screen, it'll have a little picture of them right here. I can just click that picture and I can add a new media item or select one of the, an existing media item. So that's all I have to do to select the primary photo for a person now. So it's a zillion times easy. Anyways, okay, so there you have it. Um, you know, I hope you find this video helpful, you know, as we continue to, you know, to continue with our development and, and testing of what's basically our biggest, uh, our biggest upgrade that we've ever had. And so thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.